G'day fellas and welcome to a juicy legacy guide video. In this video we're going to be going over their strongest strategy and that is the two town center Song Dynasty defense. This strategy is weak against absolutely nothing and strong against absolutely everything. So let's get into it. We're going to start by queuing three villagers in the town center. We're going to move all of our villagers that we've got here over onto a straggler tree and then we're going to move our scout out. It's a really simple opening. Uh, you don't have to worry about building any buildings really quickly, uh, but we will have to worry about the mill. So the reason why we do this is we gather up this wood because we're going to be using this wood to build a mining camp when we're looking to get our second town center down. Uh, so we need that mining camp. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by just putting the blueprint here, moving the sheep across, supervising, and then this villager is going to be right-clicked onto this mill, move all of the villagers here onto the mill, and then that first villager, if you can do it, get him over onto this other side to start killing these sheep. Now... You might hear my voice, you might hear that it's a little bit, uh, how do I say, a little bit scruffy, I guess you could say, uh, and that is because I'm once again sick. Yes, uh, I we recovered from the last sickness, and we got sick almost immediately after about four or five days, so such is life, having a, having little ones running around. So, one of the things you, you'll see, one of the things you'll notice here is that I've got the three sheep down, I've already taken all of them out, really important, we want to make sure that we spread our villages evenly over these uh, these sheep carcasses so if you've got seven villages which we do here it's going to be two three two that's the best way to do it so once you've got the seven villages on food then you're going to be dropping down a house and a mining camp with your eighth villager that is really really important because that means that we're not going to be getting housed remember that we are playing a chinese variant civilization the juicy legacy so they do build houses faster so we don't have to worry about you know missing out any of that time on the town center now behind this one of the other key factors that we're looking to do is make sure that we are scouting out for berries berries are the really big thing that we want to be looking for as the juicy legacy just simply because our, of our meditation gardens landmark it's a really important landmark that we get those um that we get the, the meditation gardens nearby uh the some of the berries on this map in particular this is gorge a uh, really good map for your uh for your meditation gardens so always be looking to try and find them but I, I think the most important thing you can do is juicy legacy early on avoid scouting your opponent you can definitely scout towards the middle of the map but make sure you loop back around and make sure you try and find somewhere nice so now that we've got seven villages on food three villages on gold we're going to rally once again back towards our food and you can see that our imperial official because our uh our mill is right next to the town center and we, we always want to do this it means that all of our sheep are safe, but it also means that our Imperial official doesn't have to walk very far, so we don't miss any of those drop-offs coming through. Once more sheep are in, we're going to be hitting the villagers, or hit, using the villagers to hit the sheep. Really important. And now we're looking for that uh, that age up. Now, I've been really slow with my uh, villager transition out here, but there's a reason why. And that is because I want to show you that it's possible for you to make mistakes here, even if... And, and still achieve a, a really, really good timing here. So we're only sending one villager out in this situation. Uh, and I would advise you, if you're going to be doing this and maybe building it close to home, let's say if you wanted to throw it down right here, you could go with three villagers instead, just because this landmark does pay itself off very quickly. Uh, but for the moment, one villager is all you need. And then from here, we're going to continue to queue villagers inside the town center. And the magic number of gold that we're looking for here is 170. So when we're doing this, basically, we're counting the villagers that are on gold and we're counting the tax that's in the mill. So normally, we're just waiting until the, the mill reaches 40 gold and then we're going to cash it in just because it's a nice, even round number. And of course, that's the maximum that the Imperial official can hold. And then we hand it in. You can see we're approaching 130. So naturally, there's going to be 160 coming in shortly. And then we're going to have that little bit extra left over on it. So once we've got that, we're going to be moving these villagers here. We're not going to put them onto stone. We're instead going to be putting them onto wood. So you might be thinking, oh, maybe I should send them over onto stone. That's going to be a big mistake. And the reason why is because if these villagers come out over onto stone, they're not being supervised by the Imperial official. And that's what we're going to be doing a little bit later. So now that we've got enough to age up to Song Dynasty, we're going to take two villagers from food. And we're going to build that landmark. Don't worry, we'll do that soon. Uh, and then we're going to take out eight villages here over onto stone. So you can see that we've dropped down. Right now we've got the two villages building the landmark, the Zhanlong Tower. Uh, and then we've got the eighth villager dropping down this mining camp right here. Now, one thing to note is that we're bringing that Imperial official across. Really, really important. You need to be supervising this as quickly as you can uh, to maximize the efficiency. You can see that we're getting beautiful drop-offs coming through there. And behind this, we've got the three villages that were on our gold that have come over to wood, and we're rallying our town center to wood. And you can see that we've only got two villages left on food all this time. And these villages, fortunately, will be supplemented 
by the meditation gardens. The meditation gardens, of course, has got food nearby. It generates 64 food a minute, so it works about as, hard, uh, as fast as one and a half villages, uh, which is pretty damn good. So if you've got a nice little barrier like this built up, it means that you can afford to have more villages on wood instead of on food. So once that meditation gardens is finished, you can see we've got the 16 food straight away. We can bring this villager back. He's going to come and jump on some of the, uh, on the sheep. And now we've got ourselves in a really good position because we're about to hit that Song Dynasty and we're working towards uh, that, that uh, 2 TC timing. So we're looking for about 5 minutes 10 to 5 minutes 15. If you can get that sort of timing, you're in a really, really good spot. Uh, even up to 520 and you're, you're definitely on par. Anything later than that and you're probably going to have... Uh, you're, you're a bit delayed. So even at this stage, 510... You can expect to see like a French knight coming in at around this time, maybe a little bit earlier, depending on how aggressive they went. But this is a pretty quick second town center. And as you can see, we, we can afford to put it down right now. So now that we've now that we've got to this point, I'm just going to pause the video because I just want to break this off. OK, so this right here is, is the most important part of the build. Once you've learned how to do this, it's pretty easy from here. But basically, the, the important thing to note is that this is where it gets flexible so you can choose how you want to play this you can say do i want to go to castle age do i want to stay around in feudal age do i want to build a third tc and that's definitely an option for you three tcs with the juicy legacy is 100 percent a viable strategy so make sure uh, that you're scouting out your opponent you're seeing what they're up to and you're looking to do it here now i'm not doing that against my opponent here i'm playing against the easy ai and that's just to preserve the state of this game and just to make sure that we're not going up against uh, anything that we're not expecting you know like a men at arm rush or a spearman rush in this case against uh, the, the chinese so that that's essentially it so now what we're going to do we're going to look to prioritize putting down this town center uh, we've got eight or seven villages here building the town center and we're making sure that we've got more villages on food. This is really important because we want to have enough food for the villages once this second town center comes up. So ideally we want seven to eight villages on food and we also want to be working towards a second imperial official. Ideally you'd love to have him out as soon as this, this lumber camp comes up but you can't always get it perfect. Now because we've got these so close as well to the main town centers, what it means is that we can essentially have a whole bunch of gold in our back pocket without ever going and collecting gold. Now, we will eventually move villages out there, and you can see from the way that we balance things uh, that we will eventually do that. But with the spare gold that we've got early on, we're going to be looking to get double broadaxe because it doesn't cost wood, and any of that wood that we're going to be getting, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be turning that into archery ranges. And the idea here is simple. We're taking advantage of the Jiangnan Tower. The Jiangnan Tower, and at six minutes, our first archery range comes down. The Jiangnan Tower allows us to build a defense uh, with poor macro. Essentially, if you have too much wood, you simply place down more archery ranges, and eventually you'll be able to use those. Uh, but in the meantime, you'll just get yourself a free Zhukunu. So that's really, really nice. And you can see it queuing up right there. We're going to move forward now because, you know, look, to be honest, there could be longbows up here. You're going to have yourself a tough time. Against the English, against as the Juicy Legacy, you're always going to have a tough time. Uh, but we're looking to secure this uh, this gold, so we're going to throw the outpost down on it. If you're playing in a more aggressive matchup, uh, then, to be honest, you probably wanted to outpost that a little bit earlier, or you might be thinking about maybe throwing it out here, maybe looking to run some villages down over to the bottom side. Uh, lots of different options for you. Don't always have to go for this main gold. Uh, but all we need is a handful of villages on gold. That's going to allow us to produce our Zhukunu. It's going to allow us to get our Imperial officials. So you can see we've got the second one out, and now we can start working towards building that mass. So now that we've, we've got our town centers pumping over time, uh, and that is the key here. So the reason why I'm doing this video is because I often, uh, when I'm coaching over on Patreon, uh, often when I'm coaching the Juicy Legacy, I refer people to a video, but I don't overtly show them the build order. I'm just like, oh yeah, you can see the build order kind of here. And so I wanted to come in and I wanted to, you know, actually demonstrate how this build order is done because we did the Fast Castle back when the Juicy Legacy came out, but we never covered this build order. This one's been around for a while though. I've, I've, I'm yet to see anything that can get a town center faster than five minutes, 10 with Song Dynasty. It seems to be the quickest, but if you've seen something quicker, let me know because uh, we can always do an update. Uh, but the, the, at the moment, the main macro focus is just going to be about making sure you've got plenty of bills on wood, stacking up those villages on food as well. And when you hit about 12-12, that's when you can peel off five villages and bring them over onto the gold. And then we're rallying from here. You can see that we're, we're double stacking out over onto food for the moment. So I'm going to pause it here, the eight minute mark. And the reason why we're pausing it here is because we're actually transitioning out to the mill here. I know a lot of pro players in particular, when they play Chinese in the Juicy Legacy, are not a big fan of putting the, the mill close to the town center. And to be honest, I'm kind of surprised it hasn't caught on because eight minutes into the game, there's a lot that can happen in that time. And if you're planning to 
go for two TCs like this, it means for the first five minutes of the game, you don't want to be exposed. Uh, and that's why putting the mill next to the town center makes a lot of sense. It makes it easy for you to micro your Imperial official. It also makes it so that you're safe from any potential raids. If a man at arms comes through, I mean, not if a man at arms comes through, it's not really going to be doing too much damage against you here. Um, but, uh, you know, maybe a longbow or something like that comes in on the front. That's going to be a problem for you. Uh, and this mitigates that completely. At eight minutes, you've got 37 villagers. 50 wood, it's not a big deal for you. So just make sure that when you're doing this in your own games, don't risk it by putting the mill out on the berries. You can always expand to the berries later, as we do here at the eight minute mark. And then eventually we will transition over to farms. We'll go for a nice little farm expansion. So we'll keep on moving on. And at this stage, all we're doing is we're just pumping out Zhukadu. We've got four at a time coming in. We've got town centers that are both producing villages. And this is essentially the goal. From here, what we're looking to do is just mass Zhukunu. That's all, all we need, right? Because we're playing defensively. Mass Zhukunu. Try and avoid idle stronger if we can as well. That would be lovely. Uh, we're massing Zhukunu, and then we're going to be working towards our blacksmith upgrade. So we always want to be thinking about those. It can be a bit difficult to remember sometimes the blacksmith upgrades because you just want to spend your gold on other things. At the moment, we've only got two Imperial officials out. So we do start to have a little bit of gold stacking up in each of these production buildings. You can see more than 40 gold already stacking up here. Another thing you'll note is that we don't go for early wheelbarrow. And the reason why is to go for the early wheelbarrow, it actually requires a lot of early gold. And while you do get a rebate on these technologies uh, as, as the Juicy Legacy, it's not as significant as with the Chinese because you don't have the Imperial Academy. So I neglect the, uh, the wheelbarrow quite often in these games. I think a reasonable timing is probably around 50 Zhukunu. It, it kind of makes sense just because... Your win condition is I make two town centers and then I want to survive. And then once, you, once you're once you at survival point, then you can consider going into that wheelbarrow. So that's the way I like to think about it. But once again, we're, we're just continuing to stack up more and more uh, Zhukunu. We're at, how many are we at? We're at 28 at the moment. Uh, we're now looking to pick up our Imperial officials. So when you're, you're doing, uh, when you've got your own games going on with your Imperial officials, my advice is the following. One Imperial official on a mill, a second one on a lumber camp, a third one is going to be collecting tax. And the fourth one is a flex Imperial official. So that Imperial official could be supervising a blacksmith. That Imperial official could be supervising a uh, barracks. Maybe you, your opponent's got lots of cavalry. So you throw down a barracks and immediately start pumping out spearmen. Or perhaps you've expanded. Maybe, maybe you've looked to expand your food like I will shortly uh, with a granary. And that Imperial official can go down and supervise that granary. I would encourage you to avoid supervising your mining camp. You've only got five villages. And remember, it does give a 20% bonus. It's not very big. Five, or five villagers, 20% bonus. It's only the one effective villager. So really not worth it compared to, you know, the 24 villagers over here, which are becoming, uh, what, what is it? 28 plus villagers, 20, 20, almost 29 villagers. Actually, more than 29 villagers. Uh, well, actually, no, it's not. It, it's it's slightly less. Anyway, uh, so here we're flexing the Imperial Official out to the Blacksmith. We're looking to pick up early upgrades. Uh, and here what we're also doing is we're putting our Blacksmith next to the Xiangnan Tower because the Xiangnan Tower acts as a drop-off point for our Imperial Officials. So we can research a technology and immediately... So have a look here. We research the technology and then we can immediately pick up the gold that's generated from it and throw that back into the next technology. So that's always something that we look to try and take advantage of. Uh, as, as long as you're uh, as long as you're on the ball. Uh, so now that we're up to the 51 Zhukunu number, uh, we can start to think about moving into that wheelbarrow as well. But as you can see, it can be tough to find the gold around this timing. The most important things is, thing is that you just pick up all of these upgrades because these are, are going to be what uh, make you survive. Because that, that's essentially it. You just want to be able to survive through any aggression. And the, the video that I initially posted doing this strategy, it was called the Juicy Legacy uh, Break Rock, Paper, Scissors, or Break RTS Games, I think is what it was called. And this is 100% it, right? Like when you think about RTS games, it's very much Rock, Paper, Scissors, Rush versus Turtle versus Boom. Each one counters, each one is countered by the other. Uh, whereas when you go for this strategy, you're doing two at the same time. You're booming, but you're also turtling because you're, you're very close and safe and you don't have to move out for resources anywhere. And because of that, it breaks the counter system. Anyway, that, that, that's, that's my theory. Uh, so at this stage, we're starting to stack up a little bit of the gold. So it now becomes reasonable for us to move into the wheelbarrow. The farm transition has well and truly happened. Uh, we want to make sure that this transition happens. Ideally, you wanna, want it to happen before the berries run out. I, I left mine a little bit too late. So I, I think ideally, I, I, or realistically, I probably made two 
errors this game the first one would just be the uh, meditation gardens and the second one would just be the delay in the granary uh coming on or the the granary transition the farm transition coming online so now that we've got our um our zhukunu mass that's built up we're starting to build up a surplus of wood we can continue to farm transition or we can throw down some battering rams it's up to you how you want to play this of course you can think about going castle age as well there's lots of different things that you can do you can convert that uh you can we could take you know all, all of these we could take 20 of these villages and just bring them over here the boar the berries you could take that if you wanted there's lots of different ways that you can play this uh but the, the easiest way is always just going to be put them on wood transition uh in, into a farming based economy is always going to be a safe bet add in more production facilities wait until your opponent ages up then you can follow up after them so now we're up to 70 Zhukunu. It's a pretty decent mass of units. Now this replay will end at 15 minutes, uh, but we can start talking about some, some goals once you reach the castle age. So one of the big goals is going to be relics. If you can secure three relics, you'll do, you're will do you going to be doing really well for yourself. Um, but ideally, uh, well, not ideally, but most commonly, you're probably uh, going to be picking up fewer of them. You're probably not going to be reaching that three uh, number unless you do manage to get up before your opponent does. Um, other than that, we've when we age up, it's really important we need to get our upgrade straight away. So that means the veterancy upgrade for your Zhukunu, as well as plus two ranged attack and ranged armor. So I would recommend using your Imperial officials, pulling them off, say you've got an Imperial official down here working on your uh, your granary. As you age up, uh, in fact, as soon as you're dropping that age up landmark, move the Imperial official to the blacksmith, move the Imperial official to an archery range that's close to the blacksmith. So all you have to do is just click, click, and then just click. And then that way your techs are going to come in instead of going to be one minute it's much faster i think it works out to be like 20 seconds or 25 seconds something much much uh, faster so that would be my advice in in that regard that's your best uh that's your best timing and then with regard to your win condition it's simply about having a bigger economy and better units or more more units than your opponent as you can see we're approaching 95 zhukunu at the moment up to 168 population we've got 70 villages we're having ourselves a very good time here and I think what makes this such a, a strong uh, play style is there's a lot of things uh, that are in favor of us right here. Number one is the very fast second TC. Number two is the flexibility of the Jiangnan Tower in providing a solid defense for us. Uh, number three is going to be the, the Zhukunu, an incredibly effective unit against pretty much everything in the Feudal Age, with the exception of maybe the French Knight. That's probably about it, just because if they've got good micro, they can pull them back and get them healed up. But other than that, there's really not much uh, that, that the Zhukunu can't handle. Maybe longbows as well is probably the, probably the other thing where you're going to need to use outposts together with Zhukunus to defend instead of just using only Zhukunu. Uh, but that's going to be it. The, the replay will end here uh, and we'll just we'll, we'll quickly reveal it. Not that it, it, uh, it tells us anything here, but uh, overall, th this is a, a solid defensive strategy that you can use in your games. It's rare that you're going to come up against someone who is going to be able to counter this effectively. The difficulty that you will have is playing against people uh, that do attack you in the Dark Age. So playing up against the Mongols might be difficult or playing against the uh, the Ottomans also might be difficult because if there is a um, a spearman that is on your stone outcropping and is harassing your villagers, you can see that our town center doesn't cover our stone outcropping, which means that we're going to have to try and fight him or ignore him. And you don't normally want to ignore the spearman. And if you do try and fight him, then he might bait you away. Uh, so you you want to try and trap him if at all possible. And that's going to delay your town center. So accept that and expect that. Uh, the last thing is just going up against the English. Uh, it's going to be a little bit more difficult against the English because you're going to have longbows at your doorstep at probably 4 minutes 30, 4 minutes 20, somewhere around that. Maybe a little bit later than that. Uh, but it, it, it is difficult as the Juicy Legacy to play against the English. And I would just recommend it going fast castle against them. So in every other matchup, this is in my opinion, the best build order to do as the Juicy Legacy, better than the Fast Castle, better than the All-In Jukunu Rush. This will beat the All-In Jukunu Rush. The numbers uh, are, are just way too good for it. Um, unfortunately, it's, it's, it's very, very solid. Uh, but that is essentially it. So we'll leave it there. If you've got any questions, leave them down below. Uh, if you want to see more coaching content, make sure you check out Patreon. Plenty of free coaching content over there. If you want to see the Juicy Legacy, though, that is behind the paywall. So just keep that in mind. Anyway, we'll leave it there. And we'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.